okay okay uh, thanks abhishek uh, so okay so this is the uh, this is the lecture 5 and uh, today i'm going to speak about uh, uh, the the decay model uh, and quantum phase transition and i'm going to speak about some spectral signatures and make some connections to hermitian and non hermitian random matrix theory so as far as this decay model and its uh, uh, its progress report and its reviews are concerned uh, uh, you can uh, take a look at these um, uh, papers here um, so let me just um, uh, i have a, 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 a several things uh, that i want to cover today so now um, uh, so until now we have studied situations such as harmonic uh, mode coupled to reservoirs two level systems coupled to reservoirs and we had harmonic mode connected to a two level system this was this this was jc model right james cummings model and these operators were in turn connect, connected to their respective reservoirs so today i'm going to speak about um, uh, uh, some ex, uh, one of the most important and extremely well known uh, uh, models uh, which is called the decay uh, model so the decay model uh, basically is given by this hamiltonian here so notice that uh, notice that you have this harmonic uh, mode okay so this is isolated uh, decay model okay so this is again closed quantum system okay closed quantum system so notice that you have this harmonic mode and you have these n two level systems and this harmonic mode is coupled to n two level systems okay so this is a situation where you can imagine that there is a cavity and instead of one two level system you have n two level systems okay so uh, so this is the uh, model and uh, you have the uh, bosonic commutation relations and spin operator uh, commutation relations okay so uh, so basically uh, what happens in this model is that it is the total spin that plays a role okay you see that it, the sum it's the sum over all spins so the total spin plays a role okay and and uh, finally in terms of total spin you can write the decay model like this okay so so this is you could say that this is our starting point okay this is our starting point it has various symmetries and so on which i have written here but i'll come back to these things so i'm going to highlight important parts of this this presentation so this is the decay model okay so you have omega c a dagger a coupled to a big uh, and a and a large spin so you can call it a large Uh, pseudo spin okay large spin and uh, this is how the mode is coupled to this large spin by this two lambda by square root of n okay where n is number of two level systems okay so so here this is uh, this is basically uh, and this is the spin algebra that it satisfies okay so i hope the model is clear okay so this is a uh, model in which uh, harmonic mode is coupled to a large spin okay and uh, and you can think of it as uh, the the length of the spin is something like n by 2 okay is in sort of spin half okay it is spin n by 2 okay so notice that uh, this model uh, of course has been realized and in experiments and uh, there's lot of things uh, both from uh, fundamental point of view and uh, and uh, um, uh, and other things uh, so notice that this model basically has lot of nice aspects to it right so it has a large spin which means that there is some large in expansion that is possible on, on the other hand it has a, a spin coupled to a bosonic mode and so on and so forth so i hope the at least the hamiltonian is clear okay and this is the closed decay model closed decay model okay so let me know if uh, if there is some confusion about the hamiltonian but basically this is the hamiltonian and these are the commutation relations okay so uh, so uh, so now uh, now you see what happens right so now uh, uh, here a uh, so here a represents okay a represents the cavity operator okay this is the cavity operator so we will call it uh, uh, just just we will call it light okay just to just uh, for some notations this is light and this is matter okay this large spin is just some matter okay so so now what do you do with this and and there are, there are and and this lambda is important this lambda is basically light matter coupling light matter coupling okay okay <clears throat> so 
so just to make connection with uh, if you just think of this as if it was actually spin half then it would have been a plus a dagger times a sigma x and then if you had only taken the rotating wave approximated terms it would have given the james cummings model but anyway so that is just a side comment but basically this is the hamiltonian now how do you go about uh, so this hamiltonian is very interesting it has a, a phase transition and so on and so forth okay so now uh, uh, one of the nice ways to solve this uh, to uh, investigate this hamiltonian is to introduce something called holstein primakov representation okay so what you do is you take this spin and you try to replace it by bosons okay um, so you basically bosonize the problem okay you bosonize the spin okay so whenever i say b i mean the bosonized version of the bosonized version of the matter okay the spin is bosonized okay so this is a very nice exercise you can see that if you use this transformation okay it nicely respects the spin algebra okay along with this this thing so so you write it in terms of bosons which have bosonic commutation relations and this equation respects this spin algebra okay so 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 you are trying to write the whole hamiltonian in terms of a bosons and b bosons okay okay and that is why i want to call this a as light or cavity bosons and b as matter bosons arising of bosonization of spin so i think it it's good if everyone is clear about these notations because it may start getting confusing later so i am trying to uh, emphasize this point okay so now i am written a hamiltonian in just in terms of our usual bosons okay so what is the mapping right so let us uh, think of the mapping and uh, so so let us say that this is this large spin uh, sector okay so large spin you can characterize it by j and m okay so this j is n by 2 okay so this is large pseudo spin of length n by 2 so what are the various spin states okay n by 2 minus n by 2 and then this m basically goes from m goes from uh, minus n by 2 to n by 2 okay so you have this n plus 1 states okay so this these are basically called uh, decay states decay states okay so this is but now in the bosonized version in the bosonized version we want to make one by well, we, we we want to make one to one mapping okay so when when this n this n is zero it corresponds to this when this n is one it corresponds to this and so on okay and you can go up to capital n you can okay, sorry you can go up to capital n and then you also have n plus 1 states of course if you convert it into boson bosons you can keep on going to infinity right but in the finite spin problem there is nothing here right but this is not a problem this is a subtle issue but this is not a problem because hamiltonian the decay hamiltonian does not mix uh, uh, th these different uh, states okay so this is a subtle point but don't worry too much about it i have written it in words here that the hamiltonian does not couple states with n less than n and n n less than or equal to n and n greater than n so so all 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 you have to remember from here is that there is a mapping between spins and bosons um manas so i guess it, this mapping is kind of uh, it's not exact but good for the uh, if you are close to n by 2 or something minus n by 2 uh, in sc no 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 so so this, this here this thing is yeah. an exact uh, uh, change of variables but the bs i mean in the bosons have an infinite dimensional like exactly so that is a subtle point i'm saying here that is a subtle point it turns out that so so okay so let me just write it here so s plus acting on n or n by 2 in our notation i guess right here s plus acting on n by 2 n by 2 is supposed to be zero right yeah right but now your question is what happens to but but b b dagger acting on n is it, it can go up right yeah. right but remember that s plus is nothing but this so the hamiltonian does not jump to the other jump to n greater than uh, n 
okay so the thing for the given hamiltonian it's as well as uh, as good as exact exactly exactly for the given hamiltonian because of this uh, because of this uh, because of this terms here it is as good as uh, uh, as good as uh, 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 a complete this thing yeah yeah okay okay so so notice that because because it is indeed consistent right yeah, so yeah so that is that is the thing so it is it is it is it is fine so so that is a subtle point i wrote here that the hamiltonian does not couple see oh, this is exactly abhishek's question although the bosonic hilbert space is an infinite dimensional fox space the hamiltonian does not couple states with n less than n and n greater than n hence it is okay to represent the finite dimensional spin with matter bosons okay so uh, so 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 that is uh, that is uh, that is the that is the thing <coughs> okay so now this this same decay model is now we are basically writing it like this equation 7 okay so so equation 7 is still exact okay uh, it is just a bosonized version okay so let's go back to the original decay model so this 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 decay model is now written in this way of course because of the square roots you can see that it is a highly complicated model in b bosons it has all sorts of non linearity right? right i can keep on expanding the square root and i can have all sorts of complicated terms right so so it's just a change of variables at this state okay so so now now what do we do right so now what do we do so now it turns out that uh, uh, we can analyze this problem in uh, in large n okay we can analyze this problem in large n so we do a large n expansion okay so when you do a large n expansion so what you basically do is the following you say that a is equal to square root of alpha plus uh, a goes to square root of alpha plus a and b goes to square root of beta plus b okay so i'm just i'm just giving you the prescription what you do you do this this and then you do large n okay so you basically say that uh, you expand this about some uh, expectation value plus fluctuations and b also by some expectation value plus fluctuations and then you do a large n expansion okay so so if you do that if you do that uh, it turns out that the hamiltonian naturally is different there is a normal phase and a super radiant phase okay so in terms of light matter coupling there is going to be a normal phase and then there is also going to be a super radiant phase so this is normal and this is super radiant phase so i'll come back to this this is this is really uh, one of the main parts of the talk so 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 i i just want to uh, say that you do this and it is the same story you basically go write a fluctuating uh, you write a quadratic theory and analyze this and then so on and so forth okay. uh, manas just a yeah. na naive question so you're saying that because of the square root it's complicated uh, Yeah. but uh, in the basis of this eigen basis of b uh, that's just a number right basically even if you expand and then compute everything can you resum it uh, no no in, in the eigen basis of uh, in the eigen basis which eigen basis oh oh you mean in the eigen basis of b i say yeah 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 uh, um in the eigen basis of b uh, no there is okay so there is a b here Uh, but that's that's okay. Yeah, but this one is yeah. There's a B there, but the, for the first one, B is you apply later, no? Right. So 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 so. Well, let us write one of these terms. So you want me to write the first term? The first yeah. term is with B dagger square root of one minus B dagger B by n. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but here there's a second term in which you apply it in the beginning itself. Yeah, second so, term you apply in the beginning. right right uh, yeah so it's 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 a bit more complicated because even if you apply this later it still affects it right because if you act it by some n okay then you you can apply this but then if you if you act it by this then it will it will uh, but this this term keeps the same n no the square root term keeps the same n right the square root term gives the same n but then the b dagger makes it n plus 1 right that's fine but uh... right no so, uh, i am just trying to understand why is it that square root complicated because you can basically when in that basis you can just replace by n right and then uh, whatever the eigen value corresponding to that basis 
yes you you can do that yes you can do that but then uh, uh, but then that's only for this term but even similarly the other one probably like n minus 1 no the other one the, the other one uh, yeah the other one yeah because this makes it n minus 1 you yeah. can make this act on uh, on n minus 1 yeah you could do that but still it is right i mean um, yeah you could uh, but but still i think it's uh, for finite n it is still not uh, possible to get analytical solutions okay That much i know <laughs> so yeah oh, yes, okay. actually, actually it turns out that uh, it turns out that yeah for finite n you can't get analytical solutions so yeah yeah okay yeah. but but it's a good point that if you expand this uh, we have to figure out where the complexity arises but yeah 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 so okay okay yeah. Okay, so now now we'll do a uh, we'll do uh, this uh, uh, large n. But when once you do large n, basically it's easy to expand the square root, and uh, you will get regime one. Okay, I, I'll tell you what I mean by regime one. So in regime one, it turns out that your Hamiltonian simplifies tremendously. Okay, in your regime one, it turns out that this alpha that I wrote here, this alpha and beta, these are basically zero. So there's no there's no background. Okay, there's no background, and so basically. this um, this uh, in regime 1 your hamiltonian becomes this okay so notice it's still little bit complicated you have a plus a dagger and b plus b dagger okay so it is like a x x term okay okay so so but then uh, we know from uh, even arnab uh, also went through the bogolubov transformation you can simply do a bogolubov transformation and write this hamiltonian like this okay so it's you get a simple hamiltonian with some residual term which is like the ground state energy and this is the excitation energy okay so 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 you basically um, do a bogolubov transformation and you write uh, effective you know uh, decoupled hamiltonian like this okay and this excitation energy it turns out that this is real only when this square root has to be uh only when this has to be greater than this because there is a square here okay so if i want the excitation energy i have to take a square root so basically because of that it turns out that this is real the excitation energy is real only when lambda is less than lambda c okay so this is a very nice calculation very easy to do so lambda should be less than lambda c when lambda c is given like this so lambda c is nothing but half times square root of cavity frequency and the um a matter frequency okay so lambda critical in this problem is just half of square root of cavity frequency and matter frequency okay so i hope this i hope the process is clear so you just end up getting uh, one solution when lambda is less than lambda c and that is the first hamiltonian okay okay so uh, so let me know if it is not clear so this is this is called uh, the normal phase and in this phase the field not the atom they do not acquire macroscopic occupations so basically you can think of it as normal phase when this backgrounds are basically zero okay okay so now we go to the uh, next phase okay the what happens when lambda is greater than lambda c okay and when lambda is greater than lambda c you you basically try to do the same uh, you know some 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 background plus uh, fluctuation okay okay so i hope i hope the procedure is clear don't worry about the i mean the calculations are actually outlined here but then now if you do this uh, now we are asking when lambda is greater than lambda c can i get can i get some non zero values of alpha and beta okay so so if lambda is greater than lambda c and alpha beta not and if it turns out that alpha beta is non zero then that means that we have something we have some uh, transition right so so now we do the same thing we we substitute this and put it back into the hamiltonian okay so uh, don't worry about the details here so let me just uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, tell you what happens so you basically get some hamiltonian and you do the same thing uh alpha and beta are determined by setting the coefficient of the linear term in above equation to zero so okay so so let let us let us see what we have we have c dagger c we have d dagger d so let us remember what c is c is the fluctuation of the light 
and d is the fluctuation of the uh, spin the boson bosonized spin okay then you have some c plus c dagger d plus d dagger and so on but if you impose that the linear terms in the above things should go to zero then you will automatically get a uh, a value of alpha and beta okay we will get a value of alpha and beta so you basically do background plus fluctuations and then you just make sure that the linear part is zero and that automatically gives you a value of alpha and beta okay and automatically it turns out that this alpha and beta are non zero only when lambda c is greater than lambda okay so so it's a very simple process um you just have to uh, remember that below and above some lambda critical the physics is different okay so i hope i hope the i hope it is clear okay so um manas can you just go to the i mean the original uh, hamiltonian in this b b in the b language yeah so here uh, okay so in terms of this so what was alpha actually alpha and beta uh, alpha and beta were so uh, so alpha beta were uh, here alpha is uh, uh, alpha is the a is alpha plus a okay okay alpha is alpha is alpha is uh, uh, let's say the background value of a and beta is the background value of b but but how is that determined i mean no no so that's the thing so you you take this so the procedure is you you take this and you substitute this Okay? okay you substitute this and then you do a large expansion get rid of the square roots okay, okay. do a large expansion you will get some uh, up to some quadratic theory you will get a hamiltonian okay and from that quadratic theory there are also some linear terms and you equate the coefficient in front of linear terms to zero and that will set the background value uh okay but, so, but manas why that is set to be zero uh, yeah why is linear no no so 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 okay so okay let's say that okay so so you have this procedure okay so okay let let me put it this way you have this procedure and you put it here okay uh -huh. then you will end up getting this big hamiltonian okay in fact the first regime is also hidden here itself so you can we can just look at this okay now now here let us pick a linear term so this is just a linear term right so this is like doing small oscillation theory right if you want to do in in if you do small oscillation theory you set the first derivative to zero that kind of thing here okay so okay. it seems like i mean is it like see that uh, in terms of b and a it looks like two oscillators one linear oscillator and one non linear oscillator right and uh, the non linear oscillator in some regime it has like two wells and you are finding the second minima is it mm -hmm. that's right that's right like and, that. and and uh, yes 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 so exactly 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 so so in fact in fact you know uh, uh, in fact okay this is what you will get if you just substitute it and notice that okay so let me since it is anyway come up let me just uh, highlight this point okay let us focus on one linear term right let us focus on this linear term okay notice that if to set it to zero one solution is alpha is 0 beta is 0 one solution is already alpha is 0 beta is 0 okay uh, yeah. and that actually sets up the first regime right, okay right. and then and then uh, then there's a non zero solution which sets up the second regime okay and it comes out very nicely it turns out that the second regime makes sense only when lambda is greater than lambda critical i see uh, so so you didn't make large in, in at least for this part right it seems uh, no no we kept we made a, we, we did because a large i see i see one over square root of n kind of term ah that is there because uh, you know there is a one over square root of n here which is uh, which is uh, yeah there is a one over square root of n in the hamiltonian itself Oh, okay, so that square root of n is yeah. and in fact, in fact, this square root of n is quite important. I'll come to this point later, actually. Okay. Okay. It sure. is important to make sure that all terms are on equal footing. But yes, yes. But but we we do a we do a honest one over n expansion and write a okay. quadratic theory in in uh, C and D. Okay. 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 So now now yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Why do you say that uh, for all lambda greater than lambda c is values of alpha and beta? The second choice um, uh -huh. makes sense because if you calculate right, if you calculate alpha and beta, you will get precisely this value. Yes, yes, but why you need that lambda has to be greater than lambda c? Uh, otherwise, uh, if if lambda is uh, if lambda is not greater than lambda c, then this becomes uh, uh, imaginary. imaginary. Right? This becomes imaginary. Yeah, but, and actually, Anupam, there is a problem. Uh, sorry. No, alpha, 
alpha can uh, i mean square root alpha can be imaginary square, square root alpha al can so, 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 so okay so the way it is written it's a bit uh, it, it, it is because of some traditional notation so if i if i take this and and literally write alpha is equal to okay alpha is equal to then it will it will just be 1 minus it will it will just be proportional to 1 minus lambda c square by lambda square right but alpha has to be positive because I, I i see the confusion so the confusion is because the way it is the way the my background for a is root alpha yes okay so so a dagger a will be alpha and that has to be positive so if i if i'm correct alpha is like the uh, expectation value of a drag array in kind of mean field uh, photon exactly now. alpha that's what i'm saying so alpha is the expectation value of a drag array which is positive right is positive oh, yes so, indeed okay. so so actually the way it's written this is just to keep some traditional conventions in uh, notations in this that's why there's a root here and a root here yeah yeah actually so, this no, 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 yeah, yeah alpha yeah alpha is the expectation value of a drag array now exactly exactly in fact in fact we will we will actually plot those things you know see alpha is related to a dagger a and beta you will see that beta is actually related to sz okay so so we are going to see what happens to these things below and above the phase transition okay so now if i get rid of this uh, linear terms then i have quadratic hamiltonian but pretty complicated looking Okay. Even, uh, just uh, even that doesn't say that this uh, square root of alpha has to be real, no? I mean, in one case it can be i, and the other one minus i, right? Still, a dagger a is still uh, it will be still alpha, which is real. Um. Yes, that is true. But actually, uh, actually, in fact, that is why you can make either of these ansatz. See. Okay. okay, and actually, okay. actually, this becomes very clear when you compute excitation energies. Okay, ah, okay. there I think it will uh, the matter will. And in fact, if you want uh, uh, to be even more precise, maybe beta is okay. So okay, so okay, fine. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. Okay, so now again, if you do this, this is in the second regime. In the second regime, we uh, have. Manas, uh, can, uh, yeah. Yeah. Can I add something to clarify probably like uh, this confusion yeah. here? So uh, even if we expand around non-zero alpha, it can be complex or anything. We find that uh, the fluctuations are going to be unstable. So that is the reason uh, we choose, uh, I mean, one solution is stable about uh, GC and uh, lambda C and other stable below lambda C, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think everything will be settled with excitation energies when you calculate the excitation energies. Yeah. Okay. I mean, alpha can be still imaginary. I mean, uh, square root alpha can be imaginary. If you put it and uh, look at the st stability, it's going to be unstable. That is the only thing, right? Then Below the critical. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that will be like saying, if square root of alpha has to be imaginary, that means lambda critical has to be less than lambda, which which doesn't work in the second regime, right? So, right? So, so, so. Okay. I, I think, I think, I think it will be clear. I mean, so we'll see that when, when we, we have to decide what lambda is, whether it is greater than lambda critical or less than lambda critical, and then we can easily see which one is stable and which one is unstable in terms of the excitation energies. Okay. I'll, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Okay. So now we get this Hamiltonian in the second regime and uh, this Hamiltonian in the second regime is little complicated, but still it is quadratic Hamiltonian. So that's very good because then again, you can use what uh, Arnab uh, was talking about Bogolubo transformation, and then you will get this answer in the second region. Okay. So please repeat these calculations. These are very lengthy calculations, but, uh, but definitely reason, uh, but straightforward. Okay. So, so what do we have? So we, in the second region, we have this. Okay. And, and okay. So these are all constant terms. So they just contribute to the ground state energy. And this is uh, e, e. So this is basically e minus some 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 operator, and then e plus some other operator. Okay. And this superscript just denotes that you are in the regime lambda greater than lambda c. Okay. So now again going back to this uh, stability, right? So then you see that these eigen energies are a, are basically this in the second regime, and they make sense only when lambda is greater than lambda c okay so so it just closes there is no confusion here okay so you can start assuming anything but then you'll end up getting physical uh, results only 
uh, there is no there is no vagueness here. It is quite uh, clear. So so in this regime, so you basically have uh, these are the excitation energies, and this is the effective Hamiltonian. Okay. So what are these E ones, right? What are this E one dagger? So E one dagger is some complicated combinations of the original light matter fluctuations. Okay. So these are basically composite objects of light and matter. Okay, and sometimes you can, you know, in in condensed matter physics, you can call it polariton and things like that. But but the, basically, this E is a composite object. Okay, so now uh, you know there is a regime one when lambda is less than lambda c, a regime uh, two when lambda is greater than lambda c, and we have uh, the eigen energies uh, for the fluctuations. Okay. Uh, in either regimes, okay. Okay, so now uh, now just to just to uh, compute precise values, it turns out that the ground state energy in second regime is given by this, and the and in the first regime is just this, okay. So remember, the only parameters that keep coming again and again is omega c, omega z, okay, lambda, of course, light matter coupling. And this J, which is basically the spin uh, length. Okay, so that's all. Okay, so even though it may seem complicated, there are only few things that uh, that come into play. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so sorry, was there a question? Okay. Um, okay. So now, uh, now we let's go to uh, let's go to phase transition. So now that we have something. Hello. In equation seventeen. Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. What is the lambda dependence of plus minus? Uh, hello, sorry. There is a there is a little bit of uh, background. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. No, in equation seventeen, what is the lambda dependence? I am not able to see it. Uh, oh, okay, okay. So in equation seventeen, what is the lambda dependence? Right. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, basically you have to you have to rewrite it. Uh, let me see if I have it. Uh, uh, okay. So so okay. So it's it's not explicitly here, uh, but uh, but it is such that uh, it is such that when lambda is less than lambda c, this becomes uh, negative. Okay. So I don't have it. Uh, I don't. But uh, Anupam, I have it in certain limit. Actually, actually, I have an answer to your question. It it come. It will be there in. Uh, it will be there uh, later. Yeah. I I will tell you what is this in terms of lambda c. Okay. okay. No, in, actually, the thing is, yeah. Uh, I I uh, from equation seventeen, I don't see how do you get equation eighteen. So that's and. Oh no no no! It is very no no! It is very straightforward. So okay, let's see what is equation seventeen. So equation seventeen. No. Hmm. That I see, but then after that you wrote lambda greater than so. How did this lambda come? That I couldn't figure out. Oh, sorry, sorry. I introduced a mu here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I introduced a mu for convenience, and uh, uh, mu was defined somewhere. Mu has lambda in it. So let me let me. Yeah, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry about that. I, I should have boxed this equation. Okay. Okay. So there's a mu here. Sorry about that. There's a mu here, and if you just put the value of mu, uh, you can you can uh, write in terms of lambda and lambda c. Okay. But 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 you see, this is the this is the important point. Finally, what do we care about? We care about these excitation energies. Question is, how do they? What is happening to them close to the critical point, right? So that is what we are going to probe now, because that is going to uh, show the onset of a quantum phase transition. right so so that is basically my next uh, section here which is uh, phase transitions okay so at this moment at this moment what did i do at this moment uh, let me just uh, this thing at this moment i have a lambda c and for lambda less than lambda c i have something lambda greater than lambda c i have something and this regime i call it one this regime i call it two okay and and uh, here i have some e plus minus here i have some e plus minus Okay, so this is what I've achieved till now, and of course, uh, in this regime I have a Hamiltonian. In this regime, I have another Hamiltonian. Okay, so so now now I'm going to uh, discuss what is going to happen across the uh, across lambda lambda c. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? 
Ah uh, yes yes yes. Yeah, so I have a conceptual question. Uh, why are we calling lambda greater than lambda c super radiant? Oh, I'll come to that. I'll come to that because you see in uh, you see in lambda greater than lambda c, what happens? Uh, uh, this a dagger a, okay, basically enormously increases, okay, enormously increases. But in lambda less than lambda c, a dagger a is basically zero, close to zero. So suddenly there is a super radiance, and so, so suddenly there is. Huge amount of uh, photons produced. Okay, so I'll come to that. Actually, that is the part of the phase transition uh, thing that I'm going to talk about. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now coming to this phase transition. So again, I have written a couple of words here. You can uh, read about it. But the important point is the following. This is now how I'm going to analyze this branch. Okay, the E plus and E minus. Okay, so let me uh, let me just uh, 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 just for notations. let me just draw a line like this okay this is the line of uh, uh, this lambda critical thing okay so now you see what happens uh, now you see that uh, so in our notations uh, this was e plus of regime 1 this was e minus of regime 1 this is e minus e minus of regime 2 and this is uh, e plus of regime 2 okay so now what happens is that you can see that uh, one of these eigen values okay actually vanishes close to the critical point okay so and this turns out to, to be the photon branch so the way they decide what is a what is a photon like branch and what is atomic like branch is uh, at lambda equal to 0 they will they they see that these these uh, uh, whether the weight is more towards photons or atoms and then they they just name the branch okay uh of course uh, eventually it loses its notion of whether it is atomic or photonic because these are composite objects but but you can trace them back from their uh, original lambda equal to 0 point and you see that this uh, excitation energy this gap closes at the critical point okay and this branch uh, you know does something uh, nothing much special but this e minus branch basically closes okay so you can literally take my expressions and make this plot okay so now coming to uh, now coming to the question how it closes okay so i have given explicit expressions for e minus where is the expression so uh, e minus one of the e minus expression is here okay uh, sorry so again i give the square version but if you want you can remove the square here and put a square root okay i have given an e minus is by taking minus here okay And uh, and if so, I so yeah, yeah. manas I yeah. a bit lost. So these are ground state eigen energies, right? E plus E oh. minus. Uh, so these are these there's a ground state and these are yeah. excitations on top of the ground state. Okay, so in terms of the original language, so I have basically a large spin. Yes, yes. And I have this harmonic oscillators, right? Yes, yes, so, yes. So now this branch is basically are you saying that how energy is divided between these two? modes or so the, so so in the original language you have some last spin and a harmonic oscillator and let's say yeah. that it has some ground state uh, configuration okay yeah. these are these are like the excitations okay okay these are okay. like the excitations now below lambda critical the ground state configuration is of one type above lambda critical the ground state configuration is much more sort of interesting it has some non trivial background okay okay yeah. okay so these and, are the first excited states these are the first excited states yeah if you want yeah yeah this okay. is this is how these this is how the so you see the uh, so it can be shown uh, uh, this is you know somewhat related to anupam's question also you can ask how it goes to zero right mm -hmm. i mean uh, and and basically it turns out that uh, whether you come from this side or this side it just grow, goes as square root of lambda minus lambda critical mod okay so it goes as half power half Okay, so so, so so in this case, only one excited state vanishes, or all the uh, the spectrum becomes become continuous, or is just the first excited state vanishes. So here, uh, uh, so here, basically, you see here, uh, you are writing a quadratic Hamiltonian, right? So, yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, uh, basically, it is the. Uh, excitation spectrum of the quadratic uh, of the quadratic hamiltonian so uh, uh so, so then what it becomes uh, now what uh, 
Right. Basically, the Hamiltonian is no longer quadratic, is it? In that lambda equal to lambda c. Um, no, no. So, no, no. no. What, what I'm trying to say is that let's assume that you have a quadratic theory on either side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and basically, this energy, uh, the excitation energy associated with this system, okay, mm -hmm. uh, e basically vanishes. Okay. The gap basically closes. Okay. At, at so, lambda critical. Okay. So when you say gap closes, the all the other states are continuous or um all the other states. Uh, so is it like a starting with the ground state? It's a, you have a continuum of uh, states or uh, yeah. So that uh, so basically, if you go back to the original picture, uh, you might. Uh, so I don't exactly know what happens to all the other states, mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, but yeah. So 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 here the like for example yeah yeah so I. But away from lambda c, it will be gapped. Like the, yeah, 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 yeah. You're asking yeah. Exactly at lambda c whether it becomes uh, continuum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. As you right. go to lambda c, what? Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I think about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now, now, okay. So now, clearly, uh, gap closes. So it is signaling phase transition, right? So now you can. Uh, Again, going back to ground state, you can you can calculate the ground state on either side. Okay, you can calculate the ground state on either side, and you can actually show that the second derivative of ground state. This is very easy exercise again. Uh, calculate the second derivative of ground state, ground state, and that is discontinuous. Okay, so that basically suggests that this is a second order phase transition. Okay, so so basically you just you you basically uh, see uh, multiple signs of phase transition at lambda critical. Okay. So now coming to what happens to some order parameters, right? So this comes back to the question about why it is called normal phase, super radiant phase, what is actually happening in the original variables. Okay. So we had this A and B, alpha and beta and all. So let's forget it and let's ask what is going to happen in the original variables. So, so in the original variable, so what is the original variable? So original variables is SZ. Okay. SZ by J, just let's scale it by J. So remember J was the length of the large spin. Okay, so so now if you if you actually calculate, it turns out that S Z over J is nothing but beta over J minus one. Okay, you can calculate it just using the holstein primakov change of variables. So if I have beta, all I need to do is beta over J minus one is just going to give me. In fact, I, if if I just want S Z, I just have to do beta minus J. Okay, okay, that's very trivial to see, right? So let's 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 just once for SZ let's see so that we don't lose track of what is happening to the original variables. So this is SZ, right? So this is SZ. So all you need to do is SZ from from this line. You say SZ is basically b dagger b. B dagger b is like root beta square minus and n by two was j according to my notation. So this is nothing but beta minus j. Okay. So I just plot beta minus j. Okay, and and once I plot SZ, this is what happens. Okay, uh, at lambda critical, basically it is it is basically minus one. So all these large spins are basically down, and then at lambda greater than lambda critical, it suddenly uh, becomes non-zero. Okay, so this this is what exactly happens for SZ. Okay, and uh, what about the photon sector, right? What about the occupation number of the bosons of the light bosons? That also the same thing happens. It is essentially zero, and then suddenly you have huge number of um, you are, so you suddenly have huge number of photons, and this phenomena is basically uh, called super radiance. Okay, so so you 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 uh, you tune lambda, okay, which 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 can which can actually be done in experiments, and this has been done in experiments, okay. Uh, and and you tune lambda, and then you suddenly see that there is a normal to super radiant phase transition, phase transition in both light and matter. Okay, so this is quantum phase transition both in light and matter. Okay, so so is that is that is that clear? Okay, so. So for lambda less than lambda c, all the energies are in the spin mode basically, right? and then uh, as you go beyond lambda c, basically from the spin mode it goes to the this uh, harmonic light mode, harmonic oscillator mode. Eh? Um, 
see the 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 nature of the coupling is a bit strange right the na- nature mm-hmm. of the coupling is s s x coupled to uh, a plus a dagger right mm-hmm. so so basically uh, basically you can have situations where this sx can be written as s plus plus s minus right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, times a plus a dagger so mm-hmm. you could have situations where both the spin and bosonic spin and photons both can get excited mm-hmm. okay so these are very uh, these are very strange uh, uh, interaction term okay so th- this interaction term doesn't conserve particle number so this is very different from jane's cummings model which has a u1 symmetry Ah, okay. It has a Z two symmetry, which I will come to. I'll talk about mm-hmm. the symmetry. So it doesn't. It actually kind of conserves parity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can create them with the same parity: seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, like that. Okay. 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 So now, uh, so this is uh, this is large J results, of course, uh, uh, and and so on and so forth. So uh, so it's it's very interesting physics, and uh, basically the above clearly illustrates the nature of the phase transition in the normal Manus, phase. Yeah. Yeah. Manus, uh, this. Uh... And first one is it looks like a similar to uh, overdamped uh, uh, oscillation to underdamped oscillation. Uh, Anupam, your voice is again uh, this. What can you repeat it? This. I'm saying like this. This transition mm-hmm. looks like it's similar to uh, this in oscillators. This overdamped oscillation to underdamped oscillation. Is it same? L- looks like that. No. Uh... But but okay, so here you have two kinds of oscillators, right? First of all, I mean, so uh, so uh, yeah, I I have to think about that actually. So uh, I mean, you do you want to think of S Z also as oscillators and A? There are two no, kinds. Saying, of yes, mm-hmm. I'm saying it's similar to that. So I'm trying to say. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And- And there is because there is uh, since you are doing everything is quadratic order, there is no interaction, so there is no cooperative effect, right? In this type of phase transition. Right, 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 right. So you see, but but you see the point is so okay. This is this comes to one important point. Uh, it turns out that in the large J limit, this is actually an exact result. Right. So in 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 the limit of extremely large spins, this is actually an exact result. right so 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 in some sense if you have huge number of spins this is what you would get uh, uh, right so i don't know if that answers uh, your question or comment but yeah but, maybe we can discuss that later right right but 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 yes so uh, just to um, maybe highlight anupam's point uh, there is one thing that i want to say which is an interesting uh, thing to investigate on its own is the following what happens if you just expand this a little bit more and 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 generate terms like so what is the next term right so you can have terms like b dagger b square coupled to b dagger okay and its hermitian conjugate okay so so there are some studies about how to understand this interact in, in this kind of you know, beyond quadratic but but yeah so so but that is irrelevant in large n okay because it is suppressed by n Um, okay. Honestly, I mean, uh, sort of a related point. I mean, uh, for largest, I mean, it it should look almost like a classical spin, right? So uh, yes, yes. So it's like a classical spin coupled to a uh, okay. Maybe supposing it's a classical oscillator. Yes, yes. And then do you see something like this uh, if you just do the dynamics of such a system? So, uh, so in the largest limit, it actually becomes like a classical spin, and you can actually do semi-classical equations of motion. Okay. Right, and right. you can write completely semi classical equations of motion and there also you see exactly same thing okay but no if you do the complete classical problem a spin coupled with exactly in the same way spin coupled with the harmonic oscillator yes yes and do you get uh, because it's a non linear system so do you get some interesting like similar things i guess ha ah, okay so 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 let let me okay so let me uh, simp- uh, let me go back to the original problem and 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 uh, so what okay so one thing is so one thing here is that of course uh, i can replace this by actual x right yeah, right right exactly. and this is sx so this yeah, is like uh, this thing now now this thing you know this thing i can write it as x square plus p square okay right, yeah. and this is basically sz okay and yeah. indeed if i do this classical thing you will actually get similar results you will okay. get this results yeah yeah it is very interesting actually yeah 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 
in fact in fact in fact uh, in fact okay this is a side comment but i in fact people have analyzed the semi classical limit and talked about chaos and other things and so on and so forth so okay. so but 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 yeah i uh, uh, that is very interesting yeah and you get the phase transition you get the phase transition yes yes okay. yes you get the phase transition and literally you will see that suddenly this uh, x variable okay oh, right. uh, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely okay so so i i also i, I hope everything is uh, clear here so these are just uh, some words in which in the normal phase the system is only minimally excited whereas above lambda critical the field and the atomic ensemble acquire substantial excitations okay so uh, so 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 and and now the alpha and beta which were a little bit uh, just introduced now their physical meaning is basically clear right so there is no confusion about their physical meaning they are actually related to the alpha is actually related to the photonic number okay so uh, so 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 this is uh, this kind of phase transitions has been realized in in many 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 uh, uh, physical systems uh, and uh, uh, and there is something called bec in a cavity where also where you know is one example where this decay phase transition has been realized and so on and so forth and you have facilities in which you can tune this lambda and they are very beautiful uh, uh, experiments okay so now uh, now let me uh, uh, so now i i i hope uh, okay so now let me make some notes on the open decay model okay till now it is completely closed decay model right completely closed decay model no dissipation nothing okay so now an open version of this uh, uh, open version of this decay model is basically uh, the usual thing okay plus uh, this kappa okay this kappa term and notice that this is basically uh, like uh, of lindblad form okay this is the open decay model okay it turns out very interestingly that for this model okay uh, that the lambda critical basically gets renormalized okay and this is how it gets renormalized okay so this is a very interesting uh, very interesting aspect which also has been observed that this lambda critical just basically gets renormalized by this kappa so the the open decay model uh, the lambda critical just shifts to the right okay and one can one can do similar computations and actually calculate this so remember for the closed decay model uh, the lambda critical uh, the lambda critical was this is for closed was just half square root of omega c omega z okay so that is same your limit okay so there are lot of interesting uh, aspects about this uh, model uh, i did not touch on most more, you know i just touched on a small part of this but we will come back to open decay model again a little bit later okay so now uh, now uh, um, we have we know that there is something interesting that happens below and above lambda critical and keep in mind that uh, you know it's good that the question was asked that there is a large s limit where it, it where semi classics becomes exact and so on and so forth okay but now let's recap the hilbert space of decay model and talk a little bit about z2 symmetry okay so notice that james kemmis model had a u1 symmetry okay but this model has a z2 symmetry and then we will say a few words about numerical diagonalization of the closed decay model okay going back to the uh, going back to the hilbert space right the hilbert space of large spin is spanned by these kets j and m okay so i can pick some j okay so let me say j is equal to some good uh, amount of j so 30 j is equal to 30 okay so then then uh, then basically it is spanned by 30 comma m where m goes from this to this okay and these are basically known as uh, these are in this context these are known as decay states okay uh, and these are eigen states of uh, s square and sz okay this this is the relation so the basis for the decay model so the what is the basis for the decay model the decay model is uh, basically combination of decay states and this number states in the cavity okay this is the cavity okay so this is the basis right for the decay model okay so now this is one comment um then is uh, uh, the next comment is symmetries of the decay model 
so let's go back to the decay model so so you see decay model is slightly non trivial meaning that meaning that the way it is written okay the way it is written here okay it is uh, it is it is clear uh, basically that uh, that uh, something like if i just create something like uh, uh, a dagger a plus sz some excitation number okay this is not conserved okay that's clear okay because of this because of this so called counter rotating terms because you have terms like you have terms like uh, a dagger s plus plus a s minus okay so you can flip a spin and introduce a photon together so you have you can you can create both of them in pairs okay but we know that when something can be created like in pairs uh, sure this is not conserved but presumably something else is conserved right and what is conserved is the parity okay so what is conserved is the parity so let me just go to this so please work it out this is extremely trivial okay um let us define a parity operator pi pi hat okay now where pi hat is e to the power i pi n hat okay and n hat is my this thing n hat is my a dagger a plus sz and for some reasons this j is explicitly written okay uh, so so now you see that uh, of course this is not conserved okay i can keep on generating both bosons both photons and i can keep on exciting spins okay um, but what is conserved is this e to the i pi n hat so if i start with a sector which has odd number of excitations it will just remain odd okay so so for the decay model the parity is conserved okay that is h and pi is zero okay plug it in and check you plug this in and actually do the commutation relations and you will see that it is zero this is basically because it you know there is z2 symmetry in the problem and therefore the hamiltonian does not mix sectors of different parity okay so basically you know the size of the matrix requiring diagonalization is slightly reduced but that's okay that's just a side comment but uh, but basically we have to work in a single parity subspace okay so we can work in a even subspace so what you can do is you can say that i will work in a space in which uh, the total n is is even okay so so every time i uh, i start with some 8 then 8 may become 10 12 but it will always remain even okay so now now we are ready for the now this is the closed decay model right so now we can diagonalize this hamiltonian right so this is like any other uh, any other hamiltonian uh, purely hermitian hamiltonian which we can diagonalize and we do that and we'll do that and we will calculate things like level spacing and uh, the uh, the eigen values are going to be real because this is just a hermitian problem and that's what uh, one can do okay so now this basically you know uh, answers uh, this basically has some interesting uh, results okay so now let me uh, fix a few things okay so now let's say that j is 15 okay it doesn't matter okay so it's fairly large j if, if j is like 2 or 1 or 3 it's, it's too small of a spin but let's say j is 15 okay so this is what happens okay so uh, anyway this has been introduced uh, random matrices has been introduced hermitian random matrices has been discussed in great length uh, by Gregory, so I don't have to say anything about uh, Hermitian random matrices, but let me just uh, show the results. Okay, so these are very interesting results. If lambda is less than lambda critical, okay, I will take my decay Hamiltonian and I will assume lambda, I will put my lambda such that it's less than lambda critical. So notice that, uh, notice that omega equal to omega z is one. This is what we ch choose. Lambda critical will just be what half of omega c omega z, which is basically 0 0.5. So lambda critical is 0 0.5, and uh, we do the numerics say in even parity sector. So please uh, come to today's tutorial, okay? Where uh, Hari and uh, and uh, Hari is going to discuss uh, uh, how to deal with this decay Hamiltonian and and do exact diagonalization. And uh, there is a code that has already been developed, and we will shortly even put the code on the website. But uh, but let's go to results. So the results are the following: If lambda is less than lambda critical, it turns out that uh, you get Poisson level spacing. Okay, so Gregory has already introduced level spacing. It is the uh, spacing between nearest eigenvalues. Okay, so you get Poisson. 
if you are above critical point okay if you are above critical point you actually get a nice uh, wigner dyson okay you get a nice wigner dyson and at critical point it turns out that it still remains wigner dyson okay so this is not entirely obvious uh, you know why it should be wigner dyson at least it's not very clear to me but but what is clear is at least that above and below the critical point it seems that uh, there is some sort of a integrable integrable like structure and there is some sort of chaos structure above the critical point okay so the decay model seems to have a sort of integrable like structure uh, below critical point and a chaos structure above critical point okay and these these red lines here are precisely this um, uh, you know basically this is wigner surmise okay um results so uh, so therefore we see poisson to wigner dyson behavior showing that decay model has deep connections to hermitian random matrix theory and in particular this is a gaussian orthogonal ensemble okay so now uh, now actually uh, it turns out that uh, there is an interesting observation here that if j is small okay now now i can i can repeat all these three plots uh, for small j right uh, for small j but if j is small it seems that the level spacing statistics is not universal okay um so that basically uh, may be related to uh, uh, yesterday's question of abhishek where he asked about what happens to coupled jains cummings model and uh, whether there is a, a random matrix connection and uh, mahavir actually did some preliminary calculations and it seems that it's not very clear but that may be because the number of effective two level systems are still small so the my claim is that i can do something even to the jains cummings model to make it uh, to make it connected to random matrix theory but if you just take a jains cummings dimer it doesn't seem sufficient enough to be chaotic in the random matrix theory sense okay so but anyway so that that's a side comment about jains cummings model but uh, but i just wanted to say that dk model really you know uh, uh, provides a natural uh, platform to study large j limit small j limit semi classical limit and there are studies in which you can you can you can you can uh, uh, study uh, out of time ordered commutators in the decay model and so on so but 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 basically that is what i wanted to say about uh, closed decay model okay so now uh, now let me go to the open uh, open decay model so the open decay model uh, basically uh, is this uh, so is there any question about the closed decay model uh, and until now okay so so now uh, uh, yeah so i wanted to mention that okay level spacing statistics is one thing but but we can compute uh, several other uh, uh, things like which are which are which are which have now become important for uh, for uh, uh, for studying chaos uh, like gap statistics uh, like 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 um, uh, gap ratios and so on and so forth but i'll not do those things but instead i'll go to open decay model so open decay model is this okay so now going to open decay model uh, let us uh, let us just make sure we understand what we mean by uh, doing something with the open decay model so in open decay model uh, you have to solve for uh, what you have to solve for right you have to solve for um, eigen value some sub something okay and uh, now i have already discussed yesterday and hari also discussed in length in the tutorial about this vectorization procedure and so on and so forth um but it's clear that if we do something like this uh right then you end up getting this lewillian okay now you see this lewillian for this decay model okay you'll get the lewillian for this decay model of course this is a complicated procedure because the first of all the number it's a large spin problem okay so when j is 30 you already have a large spin and on top of that you have a bosonic sector right you have this cavity photon sector which 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 itself needs to be truncated right it is also a infinite hilbert space infinite dimensional hilbert space which also needs to be truncated so it's a fairly complicated situation where you have you have to deal with very large uh, matrices effectively but you finally get, get this object which is a very complicated object now okay because because it has these uh, you know things uh, inbuilt into it and it's a very complicated object now the eigen values of this object are basically complex right it's a open quantum system 
uh, it's a non hermitian it's a non hermitian uh, matrix and it's complex so now things become more complicated right now you have some comp uh, complex eigen values like what i discussed uh, last time and for some uh, in some notations on this side you will have no eigen values because if you have a real part then this will blow up the solutions will blow up so you have all these complex eigen values now you can ask um these complex eigen values also will have some notion of level spacing right so in these complex eigen values how do you now understand level spacing i'll pick some eigen value okay and i will actually look i'll actually search for the nearest uh, nearest eigen value in the complex plane okay and i can again create level spacing okay i can cre create level spacing distributions okay and i will get something okay um so uh, for every so on and so forth so now uh, so now what happens is that um, uh, we investigate the spectral statistics of this lovellian okay uh, sorry are you able to hear me uh, my no, if well, there was a discon i mean but now it's fine okay but but did you hear this part this part is fine uh, yeah i think so okay okay so, so i just want can you just repeat i mean this yeah 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 okay so let me just briefly repeat it again so basically this is the decay model okay that uh, is the open decay model okay uh, basically this is the usual decay hamiltonian and plus you have this lindblad term okay and yesterday we saw that uh, uh, we saw that uh, you can vectorize such problems and and write it in this form here okay you can write it in this form uh and uh, and uh, and now to write it in this form you will end up getting the lovellian okay and this lovellian is now going to be a non hermitian matrix and it will have eigen values in the complex plane so this is how its eigen values would look okay in the complex plane this is real part of eigen value this is imaginary part of eigen value sorry uh let me call it delta because lambda is already used somewhere so these are the eigen values you cannot have eigen values on this side because that will suggest that solutions are blowing up now i can ask the same questions that gregory was mentioning about um, about uh, hermitian uh, random matrices or real eigen values now in complex eigen values we can also ask about level spacing okay meaning that we can ask what is the distance between this eigen value and its nearest eigen values okay so so you have to uh, look at eigen values in the complex plane they are no more on the real line so the level spacing is bit tricky but then you search for the nearest eigen value and then you can create some level spacing distribution okay so i hope there is no confusion about this that you can also define level spacing for complex eigen values okay so that's what uh, so that's what we have to do for open quantum systems right or non hermitian quantum systems i mean manas so i mean if you switch off the coupling then of course the eigen values of the lindblad will not be the energy levels but probably the difference of the energy levels right Uh, which coupling? Uh, like if you switch off the kappa, let's say, or this interaction with the reservoir. Yeah, yeah. So this is the path. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then of course uh, uh, the Lovellian. If you look at the eigen values, they won't be the original uh, eigen values, but the differences, I think, of the energy levels, right? That's right. That's right. But then they will again sit on the real line. They will sit on the real line, but then the statistics won't be like the original uh, of the actual. ha huh. so okay okay so that that is that is important so if you put kappa to zero you better off just go to the hamiltonian problem ha oh, okay so i mean i mean it looks like a completely different object therefore i mean right 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 completely right. so, but a bit different okay bit different actually actually we are we, we i plan to investigate this actually to actually take kappa to zero and see what how, how do these eigen values start moving right and and to see whether we can uh, to see whether we can uh, compute we can still define some level spacing but the question is uh, what will it correspond to right right yeah right so 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 uh, so i have something uh, yeah so 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 okay i have a comment about possible comment about this but let me go to the results but uh, as of now just assume that when we have kappa then we do this business because this is a much more complicated uh, calculation when we don't have kappa we just do whatever we uh, whatever i showed you previously for hermitian problems So now, uh, now we investigate the spectral statistics I, of the Lovellian. Yeah. yeah, I have one question. Uh, so, uh, when you do this level spacing, uh, do you consider absolute values or uh, like real or imaginary parts separately? 
no no we, act, we actually calculate the real distance the absolute distance okay absolute distance on the complex plane yeah 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 okay. yeah okay so these are just some comments so we investigate the spectral statistics of the lovellian level spacing is the nearest neighbor radial distance okay this was the question in the eigen value complex plane so now uh, now it turns out that uh, uh, there is a complex random matrix uh, uh, of juniper type okay so uh, juniper random matrices are constructed when matrix elements okay when matrix elements are drawn from gaussian distributions without imposing hermeticity right so gregory showed us uh, that uh, hermitian matrices you can create only one sector of the matrix and just impose hermeticity and you know uh, and then you basically the others are determined but here you just uh, draw it from uh, gaussian distributions but you don't care about hermeticity okay and this is basically called juniper uh, random matrices and 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 these eigen values are basically uh, in general in the complex plane right they are in general on the complex plane so now uh, what happens is that uh, so these are very preliminary plots okay uh, and what we see is that when lambda is greater than lambda critical so please keep in mind that this lambda critical is basically lambda is greater than lambda critical which actually depends on kappa okay it is that formula which is where you had lambda critical as a function of uh, kappa okay so when lambda is greater than lambda critical what we notice is that the level spacing distribution actually matches the one predicted for juniper ensemble okay so this is the level spacing distribution of the complex eigen values of the lovellian and it matches with the ones for the uh, juniper ensemble okay um so there is this line here which is basically uh, which is basically 2d poissonian but it is no way close to this 2d poissonian so so what we have is we have this uh, this level spacing distribution and i think the uh, level repulsion is of the form s cube for juniper okay so so there is a level repulsion like s cube uh, which is very different from uh, hermitian random matrices and this is what we uh, this is what we find uh, and uh, it is not entirely clear what happens for lambda less than lambda c it is not entirely obvious that we will get something else so i will not make any comment about that but all i wanted to say is that uh, the whole idea of open quantum systems can be uh, used to understand possible connections to non hermitian random matrices such as juniper unitary ensembles and so on okay so uh, so so that is uh, that is that is what i wanted to say and uh, uh, i again uh, i might have gone a bit fast because i sort of uh, finished what i wanted to say but uh, but let me uh, uh, let me know if there are any questions so uh, let me just ask answer questions and maybe then i can uh, probably try to cover some things that i did not manage to cover so okay so there is one question in the chat window so as a function of lambda is the level spacing changing continuously from poissonian to wigner dyson if yes why is the wigner dyson distribution lambda equal to lambda is surprising okay so yeah so so this is the, so the question is again about this plot here um yeah i mean it it is not this is this is the interesting thing the interesting thing is uh, we are not sure if it is continuously changing from poisson to wigner dyson because because as soon as it is less than lambda critical we think it should go to uh, it should go to uh, poisson okay it should go to poisson so uh, so it's not it's not entirely clear uh, if it is continuously changing I, i don't know the answer to that question um i would say that uh, this might need a little bit more investigation i mean yeah we we can try to do that uh, so the question is we know lambda critical is 0.5 right but what if i take lambda equal to 0.49 and lambda equal to 0.51 okay uh, do i see uh, do i see significant difference between 0.49 and 0.51 i think the answer is yes uh, but uh, but i'm not sure we checked it uh, uh, so so yeah 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 i don't uh, 
know the bonus, answer. I think uh, like this, if, even if you see a difference, probably that will decrease as you increase uh, in. Yeah. Or yes, yes, yes. This is the thing. This is the thing. I think, I think the point is, uh, uh, my guess is, let's say that uh, it's not very clear, but then for the same set, if you increase J, it will again become more and more clear because it's a, it is sharp. Okay. So it is true that for J equal to 15, it may not, it may look a bit blurry around lambda critical, but then you have to increase J. Okay. But increasing J is very complicated, right? Because, uh, you know, it's a huge Hilbert space because we also have to take care of the Hilbert space of the cavity photon. So, so the, but, 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 but the claim is when J goes to infinity, this is sharp. This is very sharp. So, so I, I think, I think nobody has, uh, yeah, I don't think, um, yeah, I, I think somebody has to show that very explicitly that, uh, uh, the fact that indeed, uh, there's some, uh, some scaling collapse, uh, so, 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 there should be some systematic way of establishing this, but yeah, but I think there is, I think there's a stark difference, but coming to that, it's still not clear why at Lambda critical, it should have been Wigner Dyson. I, I don't, I mean, it, yeah, I, I, it's not very clear, but yeah, but it's, this is what happens. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, so any other uh, questions? Yeah, so uh, if there's any part of this, this lecture notes that you want me to elaborate, let me know. Um, otherwise, uh, otherwise, I don't know, I think we could either end it here or I could probably uh, share a few more things about, uh, about uh, this non, non Hermitian uh, uh, matrices. Uh, but, um, but okay. So let me, let me just, uh, since we are here, since we, yeah, yeah. just one. Uh, yeah. So this one, uh, this green ones. Yeah. So this is what it looks like, almost looks like Gaussian, no? Or, oh no, this is, a, it's, it's even a strong, uh, what is the uh, growth uh, when S goes to zero? When S, as S goes to zero, this goes as S cube. Oh, it's only cube. Eh? It's, yeah, it's S cube. Uh, actually. Okay, and, okay. and and this is not no no this is not Gaussian it it has a specific form actually it's uh, it's in the form of uh, some gamma functions okay mm -hmm. so this is the answer for uh, this is what happens for uh, Junipor ensembles okay right 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 so it, so it, this is a exponential decay basically is it for largest for largest um, yeah for largest uh, yeah for largest it is exponential but but I I'm not sure if it is um, uh, it's, 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 it's decaying as your question is, is it decaying as Gaussian, right? No, no. Now, uh, since you are saying this gamma function, so probably it's just exponential of minus S or something. Some yeah. coefficient. Is it that or? Uh, uh, yeah, actually let me, let me be a little more concrete actually then we can. So, 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 so this is, uh, it, this is something that needs to be analyzed. I mean, it's probably known, but mm -hmm. basically, uh, basically uh, the way it goes is this. <laughs> so, uh, so right away, it's a bit, uh, Bit difficult. Uh, to... This is looks like this uh, Mitek Leffler function or something. No, this uh, isn't, it, isn't it? No, no, right, okay, yeah. no, 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 so, no, so, no. Yeah, I'm uh, right, uh, mm. yeah, this, this. So, you see, okay, so this is how this is how it is. So, this is exactly uh, what is plotted here. This is this okay. is this is PS, okay, Anybody? yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, it seems that certainly it's exponential, but how precisely it goes, I don't. Uh, so, yeah. then maybe exponential minus s square, I guess, right? Because, yeah, yeah, that's why I gamma, was saying. Yeah, even the gamma function just goes like that argument, no, for large s. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you can, yeah, I think, I think we can just work it out. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, we should just uh, see. But yeah, so this is, this is the thing. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, this is why uh, this is uh, this is again that's why it's called cubic uh, cubic level repulsion. Uh -huh. Repulsion. Okay. Um, okay. So so uh, just because just just because uh, these are non Hermitian matrices, let me uh, say uh, one more thing, which is which has become uh, quite important uh, recently in terms of analyzing this, and which is what we uh, we are uh, what one should do for open for open quantum systems. So this S is, I hope, clear. This S is literally the radial distance, uh, nearest neighbor radial distance of eigenvalues in the complex plane. So let me just um, uh, tell you one more diagnostic, which is very important. And this this actually, uh, you know, has uh, uh, there, there are many. Uh, so some one paper is some papers. 
so so let me just say uh, uh, sample paper i would say that uh, you can look at papers by uh, uh, essentially by prosen okay uh, at all uh, this is prx 10 0 2019 okay so uh, so also uh, look at papers uh, uh, papers by uh, by prosen and prosen and co-authors uh, they are uh, they have uh, been analyzing um, they have been analyzing several of uh, these quantities for uh, for open quantum systems and one uh, one uh, quantity that is uh, that is that is uh, uh, important to analyze in this context is something called level spacing ratio okay so let me just end with this just because uh, this is something that is important uh, in the context of uh, open quantum system so this level spacing ratio is basically uh, some number which is basically given this way okay so it's a very interesting it's a very interesting quantity which is the ratio of uh, nearest neighbor eigen values to the ratio of next nearest uh, uh, neighbor eigen values okay so this is this is some uh, function zk okay so this is again some complex number okay so this is again some complex number and and uh, this is uh, and 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 what is known what is important is the following so now let us think of zk as um r e to the power i theta okay this is a complex number and i i will call it as r e to the power i theta okay so now uh, now let me just uh, uh, tell you what is sort of uh, uh, this thing so if you have a geneva random matrix okay if you have geneva random matrix then average of cosine theta is basically close to 0.237 and average of r is basically 0.74 okay so and and if you have if you have uh, and if you have what they call integrable case integrable case then you have average of cosine theta is basically zero and average of r is basically two third okay so so these are some well uh, well formed notions in open quantum systems where you can actually uh, 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 you know compute these quantities and calculate uh, calculate r and theta and calculate average of these quantities and show that uh, we go to these known values uh, and then basically say whether it is chaotic and whether it is connected to non hermitian random matrix so uh, so many of you may remember that there is something like this in hermitian random matrices and in 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 hermitian hamiltonians where uh, where it is known that you if you calculate something like gap ratios it goes from 0.39 to 0.53 um uh, 0.53 to 0.39 uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, well, and uh, and in the chaotic regime uh, you you uh, you go to some results predicted by random matrix theory so this is basically the the open system analog open system analog of of those kind of quantities okay okay so this is uh, this is uh, you calculate ratio of this uh, eigen uh, uh, ratio of distances between the eigen values okay so yeah so i think i think uh, uh, i think um, i'll end here because um, i guess um, uh, uh, you know uh, this is what i wanted to say that that uh, that uh, there are interesting questions in uh, in the connections of open quantum systems to random matrices non hermitian random matrices so yeah so maybe i can take questions and uh, so on my um, my manas so one question was uh, i mean uh, so without the coupling uh, uh, this coupling to the environment uh, mm -hmm. so then uh, you had a phase transition which i guess it's like a, a zero temperature phase transition right quantum right right, right now i guess once you uh, switch on the dissipation yeah. then i guess this sharp transition will go away right uh, because it's a, roughly like a heat bath uh and it might uh, so do you know what happens to that uh, if you now do the plot the uh, phase yeah yeah no i think uh, so the even at uh, so uh, so even then you have a sharp phase transition but if it's uh, if it was like a thermal bath it should have it should go away right because you shouldn't get a 
So in this model, even there's a phase transition at finite temperature. Uh, is it okay? Because it almost looks like uh, uh... right. So 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 that the point is uh, in finite temperature case, you can compute the free energy, and from there you can show that there is a phase transition at finite temperature. Oh really? Okay. Yeah yeah yeah. So that is that is the thing. So so here I sort of restricted myself to. Uh, zero temperature case mostly but yeah you can uh, but they phase transition at finite temperature okay. yeah, yeah um so maybe uh okay i can uh yeah so that is the that is the thing so uh, so but but one more thing i wanted to say is that uh, uh since uh, okay so there's there's one thing i want to mention which i think uh we'll have to think about so suppose i actually uh, do what abhishek is saying that take kappa going to zero limit but still do the Louvillian. Okay. Uh, I wonder what will happen to this plot. Okay. So, so that's something I'll think about. Uh, so this is not entirely clear. Uh, if I just, just mechanically just calculate, what would I get uh, is, is a question, I think. I mean, but, uh, but I think, uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, no, because now like instead of, if you had n levels, yeah. some number of levels yeah now the dimension is like n square or something right so exactly so you have it, there's this en minus em exactly so you have you have en you have n square real eigenvalues right yeah, yeah. n square and real uh, n square numbers let's say right, n square yeah. number and you have to calculate their level spacing i'm just wondering if it you know certainly it should not be this but the question is uh what will it give or will it give something uh yeah will it is it is it correct to even think of this limit? But I, I'll 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 look at it and I will make a note of it here. Um, one more comment I wanted to say because of uh, because of finite kappa. So I just wanted to say this one comment that uh, let us say that you have this uh, you have this model. Uh, even better uh, since uh, the classical limit was a question here. I just want to mention that uh, we, we had this classical limit here. So, so it is very interesting. So here, even in this classical model, if I just introduce a kappa, okay, and study classical equations of motion, even there you will have this phase transitions. So this is I wanted to make this comment. But uh, the, the, there, I mean, like a classical system is it's almost zero dimensional. It shouldn't have a phase transition. Uh... No, I think so. Uh, so okay, this I have to work it out. But let's say that I write some classical equations of motion for this, okay. But now I replace this omega c by omega c plus i kappa. Okay, I, this is very rough. Uh, these are very rough uh, guess, but I think it works out. And okay. then you study some classical dynamics. Uh, so maybe it's not a thermal thing because a thermal thing shouldn't, because it's like Lindblad, it's non-thermal, right? So that can show a phase transition. Right, right. I think strictly thermal uh, reserve shouldn't because I mean. Uh, even one no, dimension, no. we know there's no phase transition, right? No, no, but but the closed decay model, closed decay model at finite temperature has a phase transition. The quantum case, maybe I don't know, but the, the quantum case, the quantum case, right. the quantum case. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. The quantum case, yeah. I, I mean the quantum case, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can I add something here? Uh, yeah. In fact, even this uh, classical uh, Hamiltonian, if you take like large in limit, that has, if you look at the minimum energy configuration, it has this uh, pitchfork bifurcation. So below the critical point, you see this uh, value of that uh, where the energy is minimum, it changes uh, to something else above the critical point. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, OK, since uh, uh, the classical limit is uh, mentioned, I also want to mention that, uh, OK, let's forget this kappa. But let's say the classical limit of this model. In the classical limit of mo in this model, people have also computed uh, things like Poincare sections, okay, and have shown that uh, below lambda critical and above lambda critical they look very different. So there is a lot of analysis of this model in the classical limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. Okay, so it looks like uh, uh, there are no other questions. So, uh, so th thanks, Manas, for a really uh, f fantastic set of lectures and uh, for all the effort that you, uh, I mean, put in uh, for this uh, whole week. And uh, I think you're still giving one more tutorial. 
<laughs> so, yeah. so thanks a lot uh, and uh, yeah okay yeah thank, thank you manas yeah uh, thanks abhishek thanks sanjeev yeah 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 thank you